Today's lecture then is about amphibians. Now, as always, I'm going to start with sort of a personal place-based recordings that can introduce some of the concepts about amphibians. Turns out I don't have nearly as many video recordings of amphibians as I do of all of the other taxonomic groups that I talk about. So this introductory part will be relatively short. But I was able to combine a bit of footage from my house here in Quebec with uh, our cabin in British Columbia and illustrate some of the concepts based on some things I recorded last year and a little bit of new stuff that I recorded this year. So let's watch that first and then uh, we'll give the more regular part of the lecture. This first video uh, was taken 15 or so years now outside the house I used to own in Lachine, which is uh, one of the suburbs of Montreal. And there was a canal outside of our house. And in the spring and summer, the bullfrogs and other frogs would all be staking out their territory for mating. And of course, when you have young kids, it's irresistible to try and catch them. What, honey? Can I hold the frog? The what? Frog. Be gentle. Don't squeeze them too hard. What do you think? I love him. <laughs> do you like him? Yeah. Why? Because he's cute. He's cute? Why is he cute? We caught him. How did we catch him? With you caught him. How did I catch him? Okay, show me how you let him go now, back in his home. <laughs> oh, and there he goes. And what do you say to him? Yeah, you're welcome. <laughs> the most ambitious frog in the world. No matter how many times he bites that bobber, he's convinced it's food. Or maybe he thinks it's competition. There he goes, wait. Oh, there he's got it, oh. Oh, there he's got it. I do have a little bit of content of uh, amphibians from my cabin, and that's primarily because in the midsummer, all of the toads, uh, the boreal toads that have reproduced in the small ponds and uh, swamps around the river, all emerge from their little ponds and uh, essentially seem like they're taking over the world because they're just everywhere. So this toad in British Columbia is demonstrating for you positive pressure breathing. You see his nostrils opening and closing. So in this case, he opens his nostrils, lowers the bottom of his mouth, which increases the buccal cavity, which then causes the pressure in there to be less, which sucks air into the buccal cavity. Then he closes his nostrils, pushes the bottom of his mouth up, which increases the pressure in the buccal cavity by uh, lowering the amount of space, which then forces it into his lungs a wood frog from Edmonton, Alberta, which is really far north. And so, fun fact, these frogs are able to completely freeze during the winter. So they freeze during the winter and thaw out in the spring and go on living their lives. So wood frogs are found way further north than any other amphibian species. So I wanted to try and get a little bit more content uh, from places connected to my own life uh, with respect to amphibians because I have lots and lots of pictures but as I said relatively few videos so I started calling all the family members and saying hey can you go out and film some quickly I need it today can you film some amphibian content for me and so my brother in California uh, who lives on our family vineyard and winery uh, decided to do that and so he went up on the hill just above the vineyard and in, in, this is Napa California and start turning over logs because during the summer when things are dry a lot of amphibians who need to keep their skin relatively moist will hide under logs or rocks because that keeps them moist and then they come out in the nighttime when it's not so hot and dry. So he started turning over logs and saw this rough skinned newt. Rough skinned newt. Now it turns out that's really cool and I'm really glad he filmed it because I have some content coming up later on about rough skinned newts and the degree to which they are toxic and about the coevolution of these rough skinned newts and the snakes that eat them. 
The other stuff I will show you later on in the lecture is from Vancouver Island, where the level of toxicity and the resistance of the snakes that eat them to that toxicity is very different than it is in California.